I got to shoot off after about ten minutes. Are you alright doing the rest of the show once I go? Yeah, I should be. I've just got, got a bit of a sore throat. I mean, I might have to get student to do the last ten minutes if, if we need it. Student? Is that alright? Yeah, yeah, I'll be fine. Right. This is... Cast Whiskers. TV. On this week's show, we look back at the game against Brayhead and also the Challenge Cup game against Sheffield. We look forward to Great Britain's Olympic qualifiers in Japan and also the Grudge Cup between Panthers and Sheffield at golf. But first, it's Paul Barm with the news. I'm Paul Barm and this is the news. Devil fans protest at bans on fairness. Teams find new way to exploit netminding loophole. Following recent events, Coventry plan name change. And that was the news. Joining us this week on Cat's Whiskers TV is our guest, Adrian Clark, better known as Keith, and other choice names that we can't really broadcast. How are you, mate? Yeah, not too bad, thank you. <laughs> Looking forward to the students' questions later? Well, I was, until I've just seen them plotting more difficult questions and probably going to try and trim me up, but yeah, no, we'll give it a go. Fair enough. Well, we're going to talk first about the game against Brayhead last Friday. Um, bit of a strange one, wasn't it? Yeah, I mean, we've just come off a 5-1 win against them and obviously we'd come off quite a packed out schedule, but they definitely came down to play. They played, took it the game to us. It was a tough one, but uh, points are points and that's all that matters at the minute in the league. Um, I've not really got much more to say than that, <laughs> that game. It was a great game. Um, Galbraith was his usual self. Apart from that air cool. Oh, I I don't know what he's thinking. He must have a mirror in his house somewhere because that, that is... Anyway. Anyway, we know Jade is a big fan of the show and we know he watches it. Jade, please, please get it cut. Get it cut, mate. And, and, and then you... Talk about air cuts. Well, yeah, I know, yeah. but... <laughs> well, I'll move on to you, then. No, 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 it was, was a bit, of, yeah, it was That'd a bit of a terrible. disaster. Yeah. Third, th th third period in overtime, it was like a different team had come out onto the ice. It was. I mean, when we were walking out, you said, oh, they showed a lot of character in the third period and uh, living up to my usual miserable uh, <laughs> persona, I said, yeah, but if they hadn't been so bad in the second period, they wouldn't have need to. Mm. It, it was like they'd never met again. But to, to, to put a positive spin on it, as I always do, <laughs> they outshot Bray at 32 to 6 in the third period in overtime. Now, that to me is digging deep. I mean, they have probably got a rocket up their jacksie in the in the interval, but you know, it seemed to work. It did, and it's what they needed. Mm. Bit of a streaky goal to win it, though. Eh? Yeah, and I think I think it was coming because Zemlak he has those games against us. Mm always against us apart from obviously the, the previous game but he, he I don't think 80% of the shots he actually knew where they were fortunately we were shooting straight down his neck but um, I think with all the missed chances and all the bad luck we got through the first three periods it was definitely a deserved goal streaky as it was but well, obviously, that was the game we really wanted to win because that was the league game for this weekend. Keeps us on top of the league. Uh, but obviously, Sunday night was a Challenge Cup game in Sheffield. And here are the highlights. It was Challenge Cup action for the Panthers and the Steelers. Both had already qualified, so this game was purely about the pride. And it was Sheffield who were on home ice who made the strongest start. Eight twenty-one in and Ashley Tate picks up on the puck and puts it right past Kaywell's shoulder and just under the bar and into the net. 
the slow-mo showing a real flex on the stick as the puck flies past Werner, Benedict and Lapine and really does sneak just under the bar to put the Steelers into the lead. Panthers retaliated but Gallivan's shot was blocked by De Caro who was on top form all game. With 70 seconds to go in the first, it's Stewart who was the one to watch. Now instrumental to the play, he then makes his move to the back post where he is unmarked in space and he finds the net. Period 2 and it's Panthers who start the strongest, Ling setting up Benedict who's practically on the goal line and he takes the Panthers into a 2-1 lead. So with Jonathan Weaver about to pick up a penalty for boarding, this meant that the Steelers were going on to a power play. And it's Stevenson who makes a shot, but Gertson who gets a deflection goal, meaning the game is all tied. Steelers hadn't even finished celebrating, 24 seconds hadn't even passed and Simsy was still on the mic when Steelers went for another break. Tyler Michelle with a speed over the ice and Hewitt was going with him and it's Hewitt who picks up the pass and before you know it Steelers were leading 3-2. Now that lead stuck right through to the 51st minute where Anthony Stewart ties the game at three apiece. So it was to be overtime again for the two rivals. Two minutes left on the clock and the puck's with Sassito. He hints at a pass, but the only pass he's making is into the back of the net. The slow-mo showing that it hits Kowalski, but then it hits Gallivan and then it goes into the net. So it's the Steelers who take the glory of winning the game. Oh, it's disappointing to lose to Sheffield, but can a game against Sheffield ever be a nothing game? Well, not exactly, but at the end of the day, you play them so many times, they're going to be games that mean more than others. I mean, we played them last night in what is essentially a dead rubber, mm. and then our next game is against them in the Challenge Cup again, and what is essentially a dead rubber again. So, yes. Fair enough. <laughs> what do you think of the game itself? I'm going to break ranks. I actually didn't think the game was all that bad. Um, no, I'd, I'd agree, actually. I, I was disappointed with Sistito. I just wasn't impressed with Sistito that much. But True Fatter, for me, um, if there's one player we could have them from them, it'd be True Fatter. They definitely came out to play. They came out with, as, if, as if it was a game that meant something. But it was our sixth game in nine days. We've got to give the boys an awful lot of credit mm -hmm. for getting on the ice after six games in nine days. I mean... It was like you said, it was a dead rubber game. We'd already qualified for the cup. Doesn't wasn't important, but they still went out and, and put a performance out. And as I think anybody would agree, in previous years to go to Sheffield and get a point has always been an achievement. And we did that. We went to Sheffield and got a point. Um, again, we, we we had no look again. Mm. But there were so many shots that just Dicario didn't know where they were. But I didn't think it was all that bad a game. I know some people complaining that it wasn't very physical, but the hits that were thrown, they were thrown with meaning. And I, I, I for one, enjoyed it. But, um, and I sat at the back so I could actually see something mm -hmm. and didn't have some frosted glass in front of me <laughs> so I couldn't see. So that made the game even better. But uh, I thought it was an all right game.
Well, there was one Panthers fan who was very, very happy when they left uh, Sheffield Arena last night. Heather Vernon, who won over £2,000 on the 50-50. We caught up with her as she just collected her prize. Well, we did win something tonight. Heather Vernon won £2,044 on the Steelers 50-50. How do you feel? I can't believe it. <laughs> it's not quite sunk in yet, but it will do. What are you going to spend the money on? A uh, husband's snowboarding trip. All oh, right. And a massive shopping spree. Yeah, I don't blame you. Oh, well, well done. <laughs> it's wor worth coming to the game. Definitely, definitely. <laughs> okay. Shame about the score. Don't spend it all at once, will you? I will try not to. Okay. Thanks, Heather. Thank thanks. <laughs> I wouldn't mind over two grand. Well, I'm not giving it you. <laughs> ah, but you, you could, could go to Sheffield, pan for a ticket. OK, I know the chances are slim, but you can still win over two grand. That's got to be an attraction. No. Nah. <laughs> <laughs> two grand? Do you know what annoyed me more than anything? What? Is I got a ticket and they've changed from shiny gloss paper to matte paper, so they've even cut in costs on the bloody tickets. <laughs> Can believe it. I almost threw it back at Simsy. The what in No, you have got to give Kishever credit. It's a great job. Mm. I mean, Edinburgh was £114, I think it was, and I didn't even see someone offer me a 50 50 ticket. You get to Sheffield and you step out of your car, and there's four people ramming him down your throat. And that's you, Moosey, as well. Moosey's in the car park. No, they do a good job, and it's nice to win something in Sheffield and take some money off him because. Well, it's nice to take anything off them, really, especially money. Mm. Well, yeah, we won't go there. <laughs> anyway, after the game, we spoke to Sheffield coach Ryan Finnerty to get his thoughts. Well, after we spoke to you last time, and it was a close Panthers win on penalties, and the other way around tonight. Yeah, yeah. Luckily for us, it's uh, the other way around. But in all fairness, it was you know it was a great game. You know, for for a game, and I mean, it does mean a lot in the Challenge Cup, but. For a game that you know some teams may have taken off, and, and I thought the guy, both teams battled pretty hard. Um, you know, I'm impressed with my guys. You know, and, and we're we're hurt and tired, but I don't want to use that an excuse because I know Nottingham have played a lot of games, and I thought they looked a the better team in the first period. And, and you know, we found a way to dig back in in the second and third to to match their level. And you know, we're fortunate enough to get the overtime win. You go in overtime, it's it's a bit of a roulette game, but like I said, it's uh, it's a good battle. You know, two evenly matched teams, and, and I think. Uh, you know, I think it's going to be like that all the way through. So it's great for the league. It's great for the rivalry. You know, you're in for an entertaining game when you when you show up. So uh, you got to give credit to both teams for coming out and putting on that performance. There's two week break now until the next game. Is that going to help or hinder? As of right now, I think it's going to help our squad because, uh, like I said, we we got some injuries. We got guys that are playing hurt. Um, you know, obviously Sarich is out with it with a groin pull, and you know and. I can't see it but help. A little bit of rest, a little time away, get the GB boys out of here. You know, they cause problems. So, um, yeah, and, you know, we'll focus on our golf game for Friday because we're going after that one now. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, could I just ask you about that? So, you look obviously a bit of fun, but obviously going to raise a bit of money for charity as well. So, quite serious at the same time. Yeah, absolutely. You know, I think it's I think it's a great opportunity, especially these two clubs, to do something like this off the ice and, the, and the, you know, the, the, the power we have to raise that money. And that's what it's all about is, is raising money. You know, we're boys are talking about it. Just talked to I've never talked to Foxy in my life and just talked to Foxy about it. And, you know, we'll have a beer and, and a laugh and have a little fun on Friday. And, you know, hopefully it's well supported because it is a great cause. And, and, and hopefully we can get off the ground so we can continue doing this and, and, and doing it year after year after year and keep growing the event. And, and that's I think that's what that's what's important. You know, you got two teams that from the outside looking in hate each other and they're, everybody's willing to put it aside for, for the better cause. So I think that uh, it, it's a great it's great for everyone. And like I said, I hopefully it's a success. Well, I won't wish you luck for Friday, obviously, but thanks, <laughs> thanks for your time as always. Anyway, so <laughs> <laughs> thanks for your time yeah, as always, you Ryan. Thanks, thanks a lot. Okay. Appreciate it, guys. This Friday sees the first ever Grudge Cup between the Panthers and Steelers, this time at golf, which follows a Ryder Cup format. We spoke to David Sims after the game to get his thoughts. Grudge Cup on Friday, so what are you up to? I'm caddying. Uh, by all accounts, the owner's got two daughters, right? Our owner, Tony Smith, got two daughters, Michelle and Cheryl. Um, don't want to worry you. Both have played on the golf tour. <laughs> so I'm, <ch> so I'm, uh, I'm caddying for one of them, and uh, I'm chief rallying crier. <laughs> I'm hoping Gary will come as well and be the chief rallying crier. Give us both three irons, we can go at each other. <laughs> yeah, that, that, that would sell, Yeah, that we can get sell, them. Yeah, get them. Yeah. Um, but in all seriousness, it's a, it's a really good course because it's using the rivalry and raising a lot of money for charity. 
exciting. Perfect timing as well. You know, all the GB boys go away and uh, it just gives you the chance to do something else, doesn't it? So uh, we'll see how he goes. This first one, if we can make a few quid, I think all the, I think Nottingham sold all their sponsored players mm. slots and we did exactly the same. I think we even sold a fair few caddy slots. Mm. So we're all going to meet up here and come down on the big bus and <laughs> uh, and come down and be Flash Harry Sheffield <laughs> and uh, and large it up as best as we can and, and hopefully win the Grudge Cup. And, um, and we'll take it from there. But yeah, and then bring you back here next year. And hopefully it's something that can gain a little bit of momentum as well. And you use this rivalry uh, between us because whether it's a four foot put, you know, on the 18th green or whether it's a player final or a Challenge Cup game, a meaningless Challenge game <laughs> tonight that was played with an edge yeah. because teams, these two teams don't like each other. As clubs, we don't like each other. And if, you, if it helps raise a few quid in the meantime, all, all well and be. Quick word about GB because obviously um, mm -hmm. Great Britain going to Japan this weekend. What do you think? I think they should win their group. They've got a winning record against the three teams that they're playing. I'm very surprised at the Lee Jamison call-up. Um, love Lee Jamison, smashing lad, super fella, playing in the EPL. And he's going not from EPL to elite, he's going from EPL to this level. And poor old Ben Davies should feel rightly miffed that he hasn't gone. Um, I think it's politicking. I think we've got a head coach who's a good friend of mine who hasn't seen an elite league game, hasn't seen Ben Davies play, should have relied on his head coach Doug Christensen a little bit more than he has done, and he's just taken the easy option and taken Lee Jamison. And again, nothing personal against Jamo, top lad, one of the top people you'll ever meet. But should he be going to Japan? Not in a month of Sundays. Well, thanks for your time as always, Dave. Okay, cheers, Jamo. Cheers. So, Simsy mentioned uh, Great Britain there. They're obviously in the Olympic qualifiers in Japan this coming weekend. Um, what do you think the chances are? Slim. Really? Well, even if they get there, they're not going to win it. So the only thing I'm bothered about is coming back with a team of people that aren't injured. But they've beaten all the teams in the group. You know, I mean, OK, yeah, Japan are at home and they could probably be classed as favourites. But, you know, they, they've surely got a chance. But they're not going to win a gold medal, are they? They're not going to win the Olympics, are they? But, <laughs> they've got, OK. The only reason Alfred in town enter the FA Cup is because they'll get half the money wherever they play and they look out for a big boy. We're not going to get that. We play Canada, we're going to get rented. Pointless. <laughs> Keith? <laughs> um, I think it's, I, I'm going to disagree. I think it's good that we get an exposure and the more countries GB play and the more chance we've got getting more exposure in bigger hockey nations. I agree, we're not going to get much from it, especially mm. against Japan, I don't think. Well, but um, it's an experience for some of the Brit kids to get over there and get in what is going to be a high tempo, very meaningful tournament. And uh, well, I hope they do well. But um, <laughs> we're not gonna, I agree, we're not going to win a gold medal. <laughs> for effort, we might. <laughs> maybe, maybe not. But of course, one thing I was very pleased about was to see Stevie Lee get a call up. I, w I was amazed he wasn't in the original squad, to be honest. Um, but he's got his call up. He's going to uh, go into the tournament you know I think he deserves it uh, we were on the way up to Brayhead we uh, in the car we were looking at the GB list we saw Steve Lee on the reserve list and the five of us couldn't get a head around why <coughs> sorry why he was on the reserve list I mean there's a lot of players on the team that deserve to be there but there's also a lot of players that I was a bit more dubious about I thought why is Steve Lee not going and I'm for one I'm absolutely chuffed he's going um at the same time, obviously, Clark is not going, which is a big disappointment. But um, it's nice to see Lee Jameson get that slot. And obviously, Saric, his first GB call-up. And he's injured, which is a shame for Saric because, again, he's a player at rate. But, um, yeah, it's from a selfish point of view, we've got Steve Lee in then. I think Panthers have probably got more than any other team in the GB squad. And uh, it just goes to show that all those fans out there that, Slate Nottingham and we don't develop British talent well I'm afraid we do I mean Clarkey yeah he came from Peter but, but he's developed his professional career in Nottingham mm. Stevie Lee Jeff Wallhouse developed a lot of his career here we, we, we do develop some of the best talent in the country and I'm very proud of that well of course uh, we caught up with Stevie Lee after the game in Sheffield to get his thoughts on the upcoming weekend Steve happy to be picked finally oh yeah definitely I mean I got the call up and I'm really excited to go to Japan. I'm going to give it everything that I've got. Hopefully, uh, stay up there. How is it going to be um, sort of going over there and then coming back to take part in the Elite League again? Do you think that will pro provide any difficulties? Uh, no, not so much. Everybody's got to adapt to what they're playing in. I mean, this is a physical game. We're going to go over there and it's going to be a lot faster. The puck's going to move a lot quicker. It's going to be a very fast game. And then coming back, I just got to 
take whatever I learn out there and bring it bring it to my game here. What's the ambition for the team when you go over there? Oh, definitely win the group. And who do you think are the biggest uh, opposition against that? Uh, Japan was a good team in the World Championships last time. They moved the puck really well and fast. Not a huge team, but very, very fast and skillful forwards. And the makeup of the team, because obviously there's been a few drop out uh, with injuries, uh, which allowed yourself to come in. How do you feel that that will affect the makeup of the squad? Well, I don't know. I mean, uh, we're missing a couple of good players here. David Clark, he's got a bomb. He always brings it to the table every night. Uh, Saric, a very skillful defenseman, makes some great players. I'm just going to step in there and do everything I can to help the team, whatever it needs. OK, well, thanks, mate. We wish you all the best. Thank you. Cheers. So, better luck to Great Britain this weekend. Don't, don't get injured. Well, anyway, as you can see, uh, we're minus Adrian because he's now facing the students' quickfire questions. Hold on to your hats. It's time for the students' quickfire questions. <laughs> That's if he can get out of bed, of course. Let's find out about this week's contestants. Tonight's contestant is Adrian. He's a Panthers fan and works in a brewery. Good luck, Adrian. Adrian, you're facing the students' quick fire quiz this week. We have 30 seconds on the clock, please. Time starts now. Robert Farmer, lover or a fighter? Lover. Pot noodle or beans on toast? Oh, pot noodle. Mike Egner, hard boiled or scrambled? Scrambled. Drew Fatter or thinner? Fatter. Cash in the Attic or Holmes Under the Hammer? Oh, Holmes Under the Hammer. Slapshot or Goon? Slapshot. Win 2-1 or win 7-6? 2-1. Ashley Tate, Crybaby or Sulky Teenager? <laughs> Crybaby. Thank you, Adrian, for facing the students' quickfire questions this week. Join us next time for more student quickfire questions. You know you want to. Other happenings in the Elite League and um, Coventry again. <laughs> again, yes, but uh, it's not their fault. It's not their fault. Never not this time. No, it never is. No, it'll be all, all be that big, bad Belfast Giants faults this time. Mm. They'll be the ones getting the penalties. <laughs> the bands, you watch. But, I mean, it, in, on a serious point, and I think we was mentioning it earlier in the car, that it's... It's it's unusual that it's sort of, there were these double header games, and something seems to happen on the second one. Yeah, well, you know, we've got the awards coming up, and uh, fixture sec secretary was my uh, vote for mug of the month. Because <laughs> well, you've, you've had Cardiff Coventry, mm. it all kicks off in the second game, and now you've just had Coventry and Belfast, mm. and it all kicked off in the second game. You know. So, I mean, obviously one of the things that came out of the uh, disciplinary re review last week was that any further problems and they will get looked at. So, do you think um, Coventry and especially Coach Paul Thompson may be up against the coals? You don't, you're not up against the coals, you're hauled over them. <laughs> I'm mixing my metaphors. <laughs> I think there's a chance he might be. Mm. But... Um... We'll see, you know, there's been a lot of talk, a lot of the forums, you know, that, oh, you know, oh, no, it'd be fine because it didn't have to happen after the game. That's irrelevant. Mm. Um, you know, it, he, it'll all come down to whether they think he was controlling his bench or not. We'll see, mm. I think, is the answer to that. OK, well, uh, on a completely different subject, uh, Notting Culture magazine, The Left Line, are looking for a Panthers reporter to do a monthly report for them. Uh, if you're interested, any budding writers, please contact scott at leftlion.co.uk and the email address is on the screen now. <laughs> monthly award time. Uh, plenty of votes coming in from uh, loads of people, loads of forums, loads of Twitters, loads of Facebook. So, uh, it's good to see. Yeah, it is well, good to well, see. It's well. great. Thank you very much. And first award, Panthers Player of the Month. So, who did you go for? Oh, I'm going to go for Matt Francis. I don't think it can be anybody else, really. The performance he's putting in. What was it? He got 15 points in four games um, yeah. at one point. You know, just quality goes out there, gives, gives everything every night. Well, I'm going to slightly disagree. I'm going to go for Craig Kowalski, actually, because I think he's been absolutely stellar this month in net. But... 
I was heavily, heavily outvoted because with over 80% of the vote, the Panthers player of the month, they agree with you. It's Matt Francis. So moving on to the Elite League player of the month, who do you think? Uh, Matt Francis. Really? Yeah, I, I can't remember who plays for any team. <laughs> Never mind pick who's been the best. So uh, yeah, Matt Francis will do. Yeah. Well, actually, I, I I'm going to disagree with you again. Yeah, I'm actually I'm, I'm, yeah I'm actually going to go for Tom Sestito of the Sheffield Steelers. I know, and, and unusual, and I feel dirty, and I'll be going to have a shower straight after the show. But uh, he has actually. I think he's he's made them quite a stable team and he's he's played pretty well. Shrugged off that goon tag he was given when he came over, so my vote goes goes to him. He has done well if people are associating the word stable with Sheffield Steve. <laughs> <laughs> However, most people again agree with you and with fifty percent of the vote, the winner again is Matt Francis. So now we come on to our moment of the month. Uh, plenty of votes for this one again. Um, what do you reckon? Again, I struggle to remember things, but I'll, I'll go for five beat in Sheffield up there, I think, because it, it made my job of selecting the news items so much easier. That <laughs> Fair enough. And you weren't the only one to uh, vote for that as well. However, there was a clear winner with 45% of the vote, and that goes for the brawl last week between Cardiff and Coventry. Moving on to goal of the month. Now, this one, I personally think, is very, very easy because I called this one last week. Um, now, I am going to go for Matt Francis' second goal against Fife last Sunday, which I, I hope everyone saw it on the Elite League show. was an absolute quality goal. But Yeah, it's my turn to feel dirty now because <laughs> I agree with you. <laughs> you having a share as well afterwards. Not, no, we'll leave that one there. <laughs> anyway, congratulations for his third award, Matt Francis. He's won three trophies. Do you think he'll get to keep it? No, because in the Elite League, you have to buy it before you can keep it. That's a good point. Anyway, moving on to our final award, which is the Mug of the Month. Will Devon Didiametti get to win the award for the second month in a row? Well, let's find out. Who's your vote going for? Well, I mean, I said earlier it might be the fixture secretary, but um, <laughs> no, it's got to be that, that fan who uh, had a go at Olsen in Cardiff mm. with the, uh, the security guard who let him uh, close second. Mm. I think, yeah, I think I'd, I'd agree with you again. Um, the Devils fan, I mean, you can't be doing that. Pretty stupid and idiotic, and he got a five year ban for his trouble, which is most welcome. Uh, however, this was the closest vote of them all because uh, the Devils fan did win with 30% of the vote. However, very, very, very close behind, just one vote behind was Max Burbriar, and one vote behind him was our old friend Devon Didiometti. Sorry, Devon, you didn't do it this month. The winner is the Devils fan. So that's it for this week's show and also for a few weeks as with no Panthers games uh, we won't be having the show next week and then I'm on holiday for a couple of weeks. So keep an eye on Twitter, we may get something out but our next proper show will be in the first week in December. So until then, goodbye. That's what, mate, you managed to make it through without swearing. Mate, I'll be fucked if I know I've done that. Oi, it's a child bike outside. <laughs>